Today we're looking at the Surrender at Appomattox. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So after Union troops had broken through Confederate defenses at Petersburg on April 2nd, 1865, Robert E. Lee called for the evacuation of Richmond and Lee and his remaining Confederate army retreated west following the Appomattox River into central Virginia. For the next week, Ulysses S. Grant and the Union Army continued their relentless pursuit of the Confederates. Lee's plan was to march west and then hopefully march south into North Carolina and join with General Joseph Johnston's troops and really try to, I guess, reignite the Confederate cause. However, Lee's troops were starving, low on supplies, and really defeated. They were down to basically nothing, and each day more and more troops were deserting the army. And with the Union troops in hot pursuit, there was really little chance that Lee was going to be able to accomplish this goal. As the Confederates marched west, Union cavalry under General Philip Sheridan were able to move out in front of Lee's troops and were able to block the retreat. By April 8, 1865, Lee's march was halted and Union troops were closing in on all sides. On the morning of April 9th, Lee ordered an attack to attempt to break through the Union pursuit. Lee believed his troops were simply going to be fighting lightly armed Union cavalry. So, the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse takes place. This was a brief battle because the Confederates soon came to realize that they weren't just fighting cavalry, they were fighting Union troops that had been reinforced by two corps of Union infantry. Lee was now completely out of options, and Lee was quoted as saying, There is nothing left for me to do but go and see General Grant, and I would rather die a thousand deaths. Lee sent a, mes a messenger under a white flag to deliver a message to Grant saying he was willing to discuss surrender. They arranged for a meeting to take place at 1 o'clock in the afternoon at the home of Wilbur McLean in the small town of Appomattox Courthouse. Interestingly, Wilbur McLean had moved to Appomattox Courthouse about four years earlier. Before that, he had lived near the small Virginia town of Manassas Junction, where the first major land battle of the Civil War had taken place, the first Battle of Bull Run. And a cannonball had actually struck his house landing in the kitchen. So Wilbur McLean moved his family west, hoping to stay clear of the war. So as the story goes, Wilbur McLean could honestly say the war began in his kitchen and ended in his front parlor. But now for the surrender itself. Lee arrived right at one o'clock to the meeting, dressed in his best, you know, clean uniform, and was accompanied by just one of his staff, Colonel Charles Marshall. Grant arrived about 30 minutes later in a mud-smattered uniform. With Grant came a large staff, because everyone wanted to be there for the event and to see Robert E. Lee, this guy that had antagonized them for the past four years. Among those there with Grant were, of course, Philip, Philip, General Philip Sheridan, Robert Lincoln, who was President Lincoln's oldest son, who had been assigned to Grant's personal staff, was there, and Lieutenant Colonel Ely Parker, who was a Native American that attempted to raise a regiment of Iroquois volunteers at the beginning of the war and, it, and had been denied that, but had risen through the ranks and was now Grant's personal secretary. The surrender documents themselves were actually written by Parker. As the story goes, when Lee was introduced to Parker, Lee, Lee shook his hand and said, I'm glad to see one real American is here. Ely Parker then responded by saying, we are all Americans. As the conversation between Lee and Grant began, they attempted to have... I guess some small talk. Grant reminded Lee that they had once met during the Mexican-American War while they were both serving. Lee said that he vaguely remembered meeting Grant, but didn't really that didn't really clearly remember it. But they talked for about half an hour before Lee brought Grant back to the point of the meeting and the surrender. Lee fully expected to be taken prisoner since Grant was known as Unconditional Surrender Grant. However, Grant had been told by President Lincoln that when the time came for surrender that the Union was going to be very genu generous. And Grant was. The terms Grant offered were all officers and men would be pardoned or basically forgiven and not taken prisoner and could simply go home. They would have to turn over their weapons to the Union, but they would be allowed to keep their personal property. Most importantly, they were allowed to keep their horses, which they could use for spring planting when they went back home. Furthermore, Lee had mentioned that his army was without food, so Grant offered to give him 25,000 rations before they departed. Lee was basically shocked and signed the surrender. Lee and Marshall left the meeting as Grant and his staff came out to the front porch to see them off. Grant and Lee saluted each other as Lee departed. As Lee rode off, Union soldiers began to cheer. Grant quickly ordered them to stop, telling them that the rebels were once again their countrymen and we should not celebrate at their downfall. 
Lee returned to his army and addressed them and basically told them, you know, let's peacefully hand over our weapons and let's just go home. The next day, an estimated 28,000 Confederates laid down their guns and surrendered. Although there would still be some small battles that would take place and the last Confederate ground forces would not surrender until June, June 23rd of 1865, for the most part, Lee's surrender is agreed upon as being the end of the war. Almost exactly to the day from the first shot at Fort Sumner on April 12th, 1861, here we have April 9th, 1865, four years later, and four years of terrible fighting had finally come to an end. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.